Well, during the process of translation, when we are converting or when we are forming proteins from messenger RNA, which is mRNA, each codon that is red represents an amino acid. And that amino acid that is to be brought is brought by tRNA. And so during the process, we have got different codons. So let's start with AUG, then say CGG, and then they say UCC, and then GCU, and then let's say CUU. So if this is mRNA, which is running in the 5 prime, to a 3 prime. Well, this happens immediately the process of transcription finishes when DNA is converted into mRNA. That happens in the nucleus or mitochondria because that is where DNA is found. The DNA is going to come out of the nucleus or the mitochondria and go into the cytoplasm. Immediately it reaches the cytoplasm, the small subunits, ribosomes are made up of the large subunits and small subunits. So the small subunits are going to locate the 5 prime end of mRNA and start moving along it in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And so it is always in that direction that mRNA is red when we are forming proteins. Well, immediately the small subunit reaches a codon that reads A U G. A codon is a group of three nucleotides which is going to specify an amino acid that is going to be brought. So when the small subunit of the ribosome reaches this point and reads A U G, so a certain amino acid has to be brought. And so if we check on the genetic code, A U G the first num the first portion we get is this. This is the first base. So the first base we are getting A. The top is representing the second base. We are getting U. And then this side we are getting the third base. So to get the first base, we are just getting where this suppose we intersect with this. So now get G. Sorry. <coughs> so there is a G. So the point of intersection AUG is there. So that means methionine has to be brought. So immediately we read AUG on the codon, methionine has to be brought. And so we are reading mRNA. What is going to bring that amino acid methionine is tRNA. Now for it to bring that amino acid it undergoes what is called amino acid activation or tRNA charging so we are going to charge tRNA with a specific amino acid according to the codon that has been read so in this case it is AUG we want to bring AUG now how does this happen how is tRNA charged now tRNA is more like let's let me draw a simple structure of tRNA alright that would be a simple structure of tRNA now we need to know some parts that tRNA has. Well, this one is much longer, like that. So this is the three end. I mean, that's the f the shorter one is the five end. This is the five prime end. This is the three prime end. All right. Now, what we are seeing here is called a variable loop. And the down portion here has got three nucleotides which are complementary to what will be read here. 
and so each TRN has got a complementary base pairing that I mean has got a complementary base for the specific codon and so the down one is called the anticodon so that is the anticodon and then this end is called the D loop all right and then we have got this portion which accepts this is the portion where aminoacids are going to attach and so it is called the acceptor arm so at the far end of the 5 prime end we have got also a phosphate group there all right so this is a simple representation of trna now during the process of trna charging or amino acid activation so what is going to happen is the first thing we are going to read on mrna if you read aug that means a specific kind of amino acid has to be brought and a whenever we read aug methionine has to be brought as we've seen from the genetic code so because mrna is running the 5 prime direction to 3 prime direction and then we have got aug here trna what, what which is supposed to come supposed to read in the 3 prime direction to 5 prime direction and you know that a pairs up with a u okay u pairs up with a g pairs up with c so the amino i mean the trna that's supposed to come is supposed to carry this complementary base so we can say this is the three and that is where we're supposed to have a u near so it is on the anticodon so this will be a u this will be an a and then this is going to be a C. So it is this TRN, this TRNA that is going to bring the amino acid methionine. So each TRNA brings a specific amino acid. That means a certain TRNA cannot carry two forms of amino acids. It is impossible to carry. Okay. This TRNA can only carry the amino acid methionine but if we have another trna let's say instead of having a u here we have got either c a and then another c or c a and then another a or c a and then a g if these are the trns which are present these trns can still carry methionine even if the third position is not complementary to G. It still can carry methionine. That is because of the Wubo hypothesis. The third position is flexible. So that means even if it is not complementary to the codon, it still can carry the amino acid. All right. Now let's go on and see how this happens. Now, the attachment of an amino acid to its respective acceptor TRNA, we've said this is the acceptor arm. This is where the amino acid is supposed to attach. So, the attachment of the amino acid to this arm is catalyzed by an enzyme which is called amino acid TRNA synthesis. So that is it. Amino acid tRNA synthetase, that is the enzyme that catalyzes the attachment of amino acids to their respective tRNA. And so we just abbreviate this as amino acid RNA synthetase. So that is the short form AARS. We don't put the two, the T there. So that is amino acid RNA synthetase.
well it is trns not just in form of rna but of course we know that it is trna even if we don't put a t there so that is the short form so this enzyme is going to catalyze the attachment of each amino acid to its respective trna now how does this happen so there are basically two steps that are going to take place for this to happen all right so the first the thing that is going to happen is <laughs> the active site so this is an enzyme as we can see amino acid trna synthetase that is an enzyme and so it has got an active site what is going to happen is the active site of this enzyme is going to be fueled by an amino acid and also adenosine triphosphate that is energy atp all right so this enzyme looks more like let me show it So let's say this is amino acid or trna synthetase it has got an active site as we know all enzymes have got an active site and so this portion we can see here in circular is the point where an amino acid is going to attach and then we also have a point there where atp can be able to attach so what happens is we are going to have our atp All right. So the amino acid comes and attaches at this point. Now this amino acid, the active site well what we are feeling is the active site of the enzyme. So we are going to bind an amino acid and also ATP. So let me let's say ATP. ATP is, they are supposed to fit exactly because they have got like enzymes and their substrates have got complementary bases i mean complementary parts the part of the the active site of the enzyme we are supposed to fill it with the right thing let me just show on this portion All right, so we are filling it with an amino acid and also ATP. That is the first stage. So we know that ATP, this is a nucleotide, adenosine triphosphate. So, which is the the pentose sugar. There is ribose, and then we have got adenosine there, and then we have got the three phosphates. That is why it is called adenosine triphosphate. So that is it. So the amino acid is going to attach at that point, and then adenine, adenosine triphosphate is there. So we know that for it to be triphosphate, then it has got three phosphates. Now what is going to happen is the ATP molecule instead the ATP instead of us having triphosphate, the two phosphates are going to break off, and so. We are going to have the two phosphates just alone. They are going to break off at that point. So when they do break off, what is going to now happen the next thing is we are going to remain with adenosine monophosphate. And then the two phosphates are just going to be alone. Now the adenosine mono so we have got now what is at, at attached is adenosine monophosphate because it's only one phosphate, and then we have got so that is adenosine monophosphate and then we have got our amino acid there
Well, after this happens, the next thing that is going to happen is the necessary enzyme, the, the ATP molecule is going to lose two phosphates as we've seen and the, this is going to join the amino acid and adenosine monophosphate. Now I've already shown the way they've joined because adenosine monophosphate is going to come alone and attach to this site which we can see and then amino acid is going to attach alone. So when this is released, then these two are going to join. After that joins, the second thing that happens is the amino acid then binds to the appropriate tRNA. Okay, the amino acid is going to attach to the appropriate tRNA. So there is this site which we can see which is empty. This site, that is the point where tRNA attaches. So we are going to have tRNA to come and attach at that point. Now, immediately tRNA comes to attach. Immediately tRNA comes to attach. The phosphate has also to be released. The adenosine monophosphate has to be released. So this is the active site. Then you have got a point where the amino acid attached to this is the point where the amino acid is so when trna comes to attach to this point let's show it like that this is our trna which fits to the active site so remember t adin a amino acid trna synthesis is the enzyme which catalyzes the attachment of a trna molecule to its amino acid so when trna comes here then these are going to attach like that so when they do attach the amp is displaced as we've seen plus adenosine monophosphate immediately trna comes to this region adenosine monophosphate is going to be displaced and then now after this happens finally the enzyme is going to release this so this is trna at this point and then you have got the amino acid at that point so they are already now attached so this end where the amino acid is attached is the three end of the trna so this is the three end of the trna and then this is going to be released so we are going to now see an activated form so where we've got an amino acid attached like that. This is the tRNA which we are seeing. There is a tRNA there. And then there is the, the amino acid there. Well, this is a diagrammatic representation just to help us see. This is not the structure for tRNA. But that is just to help us see what is happening. So this is the three end where the amino acid is attached so after that happens then this is what we call the activated amino acid when the amino acid is attached to trna that is activated amino acid and that is what we call amino acid activation or trna charging so we need to understand what is happening the first thing that happened is the amino acid went and attached to amino acid trna synthetase and then adenosine triphosphate also did attach so after adenosine did attach also to amino acid trna synthetase it released the two phosphate groups to remain adenosine monophosphate after those two were released adenosine monophosphate was now joined to the amino acid after the joining trna was brought to the active site of amino acid trna synthetase to the active site which it is brought, immediately it reaches there, um, ad adenosine monophosphate is displaced and a bond is formed between the tRNA and the amino acid. After that bond is formed, then the activated amino acid which is on the tRNA now is released from the amino acid tRNA synthetase. Okay, so that is what we call amino acid activation and that is the process
it happens and so now after that has happened after the trn has been charged with the amino acid it then goes on the complementary part so it is now going to go here comes at that point like that so it is also carrying its amino acid its amino acid at that place so where this point is because it is a on the mRNA that is going to be U because A pairs up with U and then because it is U and the mRNA that is going to be A and then this is going to be C and we know this is the 3 okay that is the 3 end and then this is the shorter one is the 5 end now the way I've drawn it in this case this is the three end and this can't be the three end and so we are going to, instead of the m the trna being like this this will be the longer side this is going to be the three end and then this is going to be the shorter side this will be the five end so that this would be the five end this would be the three end because they're supposed to be in the opposite direction if they're in the same direction that can't happen all right so that is it now immediately the tr the trna comes because these are small ribosomal subunits i mean these are small yeah they are small ribosomal subunits immediately trna is brought that would be a communication for the large subunit to be brought because for a ribosome to be formed we need the small subunit and the large subunit it is only the small subunit which was moving alone when trna is brought that symbolizes a big subunit to be brought and so the big subunit comes there So when the big subunit comes in like that, then what you have is a ribosome. And so for this ribosome, it will continue moving forward. Continue reading now. The next it will read this strand and the right amino acid is going to be brought. And again, the process is going to happen. There will be again amino acid activation. Now for another amino acid and continuously like that. Well, because we only have 20 amino acids, we only have 20 amino acid trna synthetase enzymes though we don't have only 20 it is believed should be approximately let's say 31 trnas the number is not that clear but anyway we don't care the number of rnas but there are 20 amino acid trna synthetases which catalyze the addition of the amino acids to the trnas even if we have got different amino acids, all right. Even if we got we have got different trNAs for only one amino acid, let's check on the genetic code. When we are talking about, let's say, only valine, valine can be read by G U A, G U C, G U U, and G U G. All these three we are seeing are going to give us valine, the amino acid valine. And so that means the kind of um, tRNAs which we have, because these are codons, this is on mRNA. That means for this codon which is here, the kind of tRNA that is going to read it will be G pairs up with C, U with A, and then A with U. So this will be the tRNA carrying this and then for this codon the trna is going to be having a co ant codon c a g for this codon the trna is going to have an ant codon having c a a and then for this codon the trna is going to have an ant codon c a c now we can see that there are different anticodons, there are different trRNAs, but all we consider is the first two positions. The first two positions are always the same. Even when the last two positions are different, it is the same because we are attaching the same amino acid, we are going to use the same 
amino acid or tRNA synthetase to attach the amino acid to any of these, any of these tRNAs, because it's the same amino acid, even if they have got different anticodons. So, this is about tRNA charging. Thank you so much for watching. If that was helpful, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.